Hey guys, I'm the 50s Kid. We're continuing on with the M54 engine rebuild series. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to safely remove the camshafts because there's only one way that is the safest way to do it. Uh, then I'm gonna show you how to remove the hydraulic lifters without getting them mixed up because it's very important that you don't mix them up. Um, why would you want to do this? Uh, the, the biggest reason you want to do this is if you have lifter tick. If you've got noise coming from your drivetrain, it's probably because your hydraulic lifters are all gunked up and they're, you know, they're kind of stuck in the closed position and there's a little bit of play there. So when the, the uh, cam lobe comes around and hits it, that little play is actually causing that ticking sound. So that's the biggest reason you want to do this. You want to get them out and clean them. I actually have a separate video for cleaning them, which I'll link in the description. But uh, this video is just gonna be showing you how to get them out, and I will also show you how to get them back in safely, as well as getting the cams back on safely. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Okay guys, before we start, before we do anything, if you recall, I set number one cylinder to top dead center. Okay, before I, uh, in the last videos, when I removed the timing components, since it's at top dead center, the number one valves cannot open. They're gonna hit that piston if I try to rotate this camshaft around. So what I wanna do is actually tilt, rotate the engine just a little bit to the side so, such that most of the cylinders are down and nothing's at quite at top dead center on either of them. So these are all pretty far down. Number one and number six are, let's see where we are. So we're there and we're there. So we should have enough room to rotate the valves or to uh, rotate the camshaft and, uh, and press the valves open on one and six. So let's make sure, let's see, let's go this way. Make sure, yeah. So we can totally rotate the camshaft all the way around. So there are basically three methods you can use in order to get the camshaft out. BMW makes a special tool, which I believe uh, screws down into the spark plug sockets, and that applies even pressure to all the cam caps at the same time so you can remove all the nuts, and then you can lift off all those cam caps evenly all at once, and that way there are no uneven pressures applied to the camshaft such that it will snap. Now that tool is very uncommon, probably very expensive. Nobody has that tool. so we have tricks that we can employ in order to do that. One trick is you can rotate the camshaft around like this until you have just one valve, one, you know, one set of cam lobes pressing down on a valve at one time. You'll notice basically here, these are pointing off to the side. This, that's number one pointing off to the side, number two is pressing down, number three is up. Number four is kind of off to the side there. Number five is straight up. Number six is off to the side there. So we've only got pressure down on number three. And you can go ahead and get it off this way. And what I would recommend you do is get your wrench in here and hold it and make sure that it doesn't spin as you're getting all the rest of these things off. Helps to have someone hold it probably. It might be a little easier for you. That's one way to go. But the thing is, you're not going to be able to reinstall it that way because having just one lobe pressed down, the camshaft's going to be up so high that when you have the cam cap on there and you're trying to get it back on, you won't really have enough threads to get the nuts started. So I don't recommend that way. I actually have a slightly altered method that I like to use. And that method is, we're going to go this way. We're going to set it such that You'll notice here, number two is just barely coming off of the lifter. Number four is just barely going onto the lifter and all of the other lobes are up or off to the side. So none of them are pressing down. So now we just have two and four that are vaguely, vaguely touching the lifters. This is the safest way to actually get the camshafts off as well as back on. What we're gonna do is remove all the other caps except for two and four first then we're going to take off the nuts from two and four a quarter turn at a time one, one two three four one two three four just keep going in quarter turns so that the pressure is lifted off of those caps evenly and we don't stress anything too much and it's just that easy all right we're going to proceed these are 11s so we're taking off one that first one's just the uh, 
the outside cap, I guess. I'm not sure what it's called exactly. So we're skipping two and we're gonna do three. Skipping four, I'm gonna do five and six. See, the nice thing about doing it this way as well is that since this cam lobe is pointing here and that cam lobe is, actually this cam lobe is pointing here, that cam lobe is pointing there, they equal each other out. So this thing's not gonna rotate on us. You've got even pressure being applied this way and that way. So they, can't, they cancel each other out. So that's a really nice thing. You don't need to hold the camshaft. You don't need any help. You just, just do it like this, crack them. And now we'll just go quarter turns. I think people get really scared when they hear or read that the camshaft is hollow and it can snap in half if, half if you don't do it properly. I went to the junkyard guys and I didn't even do any of these tricks. I just went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I didn't snap any camshafts. I did it twice to different cars just you know to see what would happen i'm not i'm still not recommending you do that i would not do that to my car but i'm just telling you it's not as bad as as they think as they as you think now i probably should have started to pull the, the other cam caps off first just to make sure none are stuck which looks like they're not yep and we're off and here you actually have a couple of threads doing it this way. You've got quite a number of threads to just get it reinstalled. So nice, easy, safe way to do it. Now the intake cam caps are labeled E1 through E7 and the exhaust cam shafts or cam caps are labeled A1 through A7. And the writing is, you know, you can read the writing from this way basically. So. That's all we really need to remember. The thing that surprised me about these, these cam caps is they're really, really light. I don't know. I would have expected them to be so much heavier and that's it. That's the way we're doing it. Now you can just lift your cam out. And I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this with uh, some plastic that I have here just to protect it. So I've gone ahead and removed the exhaust camshaft using the exact same method. Didn't think you needed to see that. Now, I went out and got these from Home Depot, 40 magnets for two bucks. And these are gonna come in handy because we're gonna use them <clears throat> to stick right onto here. Now, basically what's gonna happen, if we didn't use the magnets and we lifted the tray out in order to get the lifters, the lifters would stay behind and they would like, some of them would probably come with because you know, there's oil coating them and you know, some of them kind of stick into uh, their little, um, I don't know, journals, I guess. Uh, but, but a lot of them fall out and the thing is, you can't mix these up, okay? Each lifter has a wear has um, a wear pattern on the bottom side of it that's worn to its valve. So if you, you know, lose track of them and you and you put them back in the wrong way or you get ones from different cars, what that's going to do is wear down your your valves prematurely. So you don't want that to happen. And what you just use is some magnets, just to prevent that from happening. You could also use some bar, like a longer bar magnet to go between here. If you have those, these just were cheaper. And if they're trying to go towards the center, flip them over. Cause there, the pole is the wrong way.
Okay, I don't, don't want to damage anything, so I'm going to be gentle. There we go. Just a little bit. A little prying action. And we're good. Can we get it out? Flip it over. See, one fell out anyway. But no big deal. That was the outside one, and I know which one that is. So I'll put that guy back where he was. So like I said, you don't want to mix these up. So I'm going to take them out and I'm going to put them somewhere and I'm going to keep them in order. Um, it's best to kind of come up with a little storage tray or storage system to uh, keep them in order. I didn't think of one. Uh, I didn't prepare one ahead of time. So I'm going to have to figure one out right now. But just as long as you understand, you're supposed to keep these things in order. So I think I'm just going to keep them in the lifter tray just for now. Set them off to the side. So now you have 24 lifters to clean. I have a video on how to clean lifters. I will link to it on the screen right here. Go ahead and review that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and reinstall the lifters. Now, I want to point out that there's an A on the side of this. A for exhaust. It's probably exhaust in German. Uh, the other one has an E on it, so... If you mix them up, that's how you, that's how you tell. So obviously I still had my magnets on there and you'll notice none of my lifters fell. Okay. We got all our magnets. One thing. Okay. One thing I want to mention that I just read in the service manual is that these things, uh, once they're off the car, they actually could expand. Okay. Um, and so there's a, a bleed down procedure, which is where they want you to wait a little while before, um, before actually running the engine for the lifters to bleed down. Because if they, if they're actually, uh, you know, too far extended, the valves won't close all the way and they're going to smash into the pistons. So you need to wait just a little while. It just depends on temperature and, you know, give it, give it half an hour and you're going to be good. So I had the cam wrapped with uh, plastic wrap, just like kitchen plastic wrap. I'm gonna grab it from either side. So this is the basic position. We've got number two lobe uh, over here and then number four lobe basically over here. And I want to grab caps E through um, E and five, because remember, here's one, which is just the main bearing cap, I guess. I'm not exactly sure what they call that. Uh, so two, number two cap is cylinder one and so on. So number three cap is cylinder two. And number five cap is cylinder five. I mean, cylinder four. Cylinder four. So you might have to press down just a little just to get them started just a tad though. And yes, I'm going to use this. I'm just watching the amount of distance between the, you know, underneath the caps. Obviously, you would have oiled everything, by the way. I hope that goes without saying. Use, you know, you can use a thicker oil than you normally use if you want to. You can use assembly lube. Just make sure the whole thing is oiled. All of the, 
the journals, the, the bearing journals are oiled and all of the cam lobes are oiled, all the lifters are oiled, everything has to be oiled, okay? I'm just gonna run them down. Okay, the torque is gonna be 15 Newton meters, which is 11 foot pounds or 133 inch pounds. And I'm going to use an inch pound torque wrench because this is my most recently calibrated thing. I'm gonna go from the middle out because that seems like logical to me. So I just want to confirm that I'm not near top dead center. Oh, that's actually that one. So we're there, we're there, down there, down, down basically sort of up. So we're gonna go down a little there, yeah, down, and down, and down. I think we're basically pretty, pretty down on everything. So now, let's rotate the cam. Just make sure it rotates freely all the way around. Looks like it does. One last thing, guys. I do, I do have the actual special socket for uh, removing the head bolts. You know, it just kind of fits down in there nicely. But you'll notice that the camshaft actually has like a little slot on the side right there. And it has that because it's actually possible to remove the cylinder head without removing the cams. The cams have little you know, they, they just have little cutouts so you can get the tool down in there. So as you can see, I've got the socket down on the head bolt right there. Be careful, this, this little ball could, you know, this little collar can, you know, get caught and the little ball could actually come out of there. But you don't need to use that special socket. I, if you have um, e-torque sockets already, I've been using this uh, in the junkyard because I just happen to carry that and that'll fit down on there as well. So you can totally use just some regular thin walled E12 sockets, shallow or deep, it doesn't matter. And these will work. You don't need the special tool. I'm going to go ahead and pull the camshafts out just so you can see visually uh, the, the head bolts as I'm torquing them and removing them. Just, I think it'll just be a, a little bit better view. but. You got, you know, you do not have to remove the, the camshafts at all if you want to remove a cylinder head. So that is it for removing and reinstalling your camshafts. It's actually really easy. If you follow this method, you won't have any problems. Um, if you use one of the other methods, if you try to have just one lobe pressing down and you try to reinstall it that way and you push down on the camshaft and try to get them on, you, you, you run the risk of actually pulling the studs out of the head. I actually have a viewer who had that happen to him. Uh, and I think now he has to, in, you know, install time certs in order to get those long studs back into the head. So just be aware of that. Use the method I've shown in this video and you should be good. Anyway, 
If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I am the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.